Mono's screaming and I don't have the audio set the right way. Mono, I love you testing my audio every night. It's great. You make sure that I've got everything hooked up before it becomes a problem. Uh, welcome. Yes, no, March Madness is a, uh, it's a basketball tournament here in, uh, the States. Basketball is a game where you, you, you throw a ball to a tiny little hoop. It, it's, it's like football, but in the sky. That's about it. You're losing all of the explanation because of ads. Sorry, can't help you. Uh, thank you for the madness, Eagle Nut. Literally, it finished. <laughs> That's like it's still running. It says the ad break ends in 22 seconds. I was, I was going to wait for you, but no. March Madness is an American college basketball tournament. You get, you get six, 64 of the best uh, college basketball teams. Put them in a bracket. They all play against each other. Eventually, one team is crowned better than all of the other teams. That's that's how it works. People watch it. People make up their own fake brackets for how they think things are going to go. They compete on being able to pick which teams are going to win over the other teams. Everybody loses. That's how it goes. Uh, what are we doing tonight? Tonight, we are doing these... Uh, yeah, people love these guys for two weeks, and that's it. We are uh, doing the completed challenge, the channel points challenge. So we're going to work on our overlays, the thing that you're seeing chat pop up in right now. This is not the source code to that. Thank you for the subscription. Yes, this. We're replacing this. This UI that you're seeing right here, we're going to get rid of it. Escaminia just subscribed. That's the last time anybody's going to see that subscription dialogue. Challenge point channel day. Ch ch challenge point challenge day. Yes. That is that is what we're doing today. So we're going to go look at the source code for this. We're going to find that. And then that's what we're going to do. Uh, developer. Twitch. Twitch alerts. Twitch alerts that XE workspace. This is what we're going to do. We're going to work in here. We've got some stuff that is, uh, oh, we should commit our changes to vision chat. Yes. It, uh, is this also what controls this? I think that's something different. Maybe not. No, that might actually be what controls this as well. Uh, Twitch alerts. That's the one. Yeah, okay, so we got a bunch of stuff in here for supporting Vision OS that we need to commit. All right, now that that's committed, we can actually work on this. So there's a couple different things that we could work on tonight. Uh, one thing that I would like to get working, but I don't know. Here's my. I don't know where my uh, controller for this is. Um, one thing that I would like to get working is that I would like to get uh, the little iPad or iPhone overlay that I used to have. I would like that to work again. Popping by before you leave work here in about 25. Welcome. Um, let, let me. Uh, update you on the thing that I was showing you. Apple has this thing called glossaries. This is not it. I was trying to find it earlier. Alex, for those of you who don't know, is working on localizing his apps. Uh, yeah, there is a site for this. You can look this up localization using Apple's galleries. Uh, I didn't do any of the work that he said here. Sorry. Um, but I just looked at this for the link to go download that. You go to the regular developer download website. You type in the word glossary. And it worked for me a minute ago. Glossaries. Yeah, there it is. 
You can download these and these contain a bunch of files in them that are all XML files. Oops, here it is. And there's a bunch of these files. These are all XML files, like I just said. And these are all of the localizations that Apple has in um, all of the apps that are part of the, the main OS. And what I just did is I went in here and I just did a search and I said, oh, type in the word support because you were like Apple support. It's weird that it's just Apple hyphen support. But no, I went in and looked at it and it is in fact just Apple hyphen support. ENGP default locale crew. <laughs> so yeah, these are the uh, official translations that Apple has. So, yep. So if you have anything that you can look at that Apple is... Um, uh, 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 like you've got something in the OS and you're like, oh, something in here is, is called this in English. You can go in here and pretty easily go find out like what is uh, in there. You see German on folder name, but no Werte auf Deutsch. I mean, they, these are words in German right here. The diagnosis done with Apple support is yet spended. Das iPad kann wieder ganz normal benutzt werden. No file names? Yes, the file names are not in German. That's because the file names are the base names of the projects. <clears throat> These are the same names across everything. What the heck is Blue Avengers? I gotta know what that is. Kronkenwagen? There's absolutely nothing that explains what Blue Avengers is, but it was created by Mike Laster. All right, we're going to stop looking at this. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> greetings from Germany. OK, so go talk to Freak for Fun, who probably knows German a lot better than I do. From having a... a, a, a taken a German minor in college 10 years ago. 15 years ago. All right. Uh, yeah. So what were the things I wanted to look at? This was, um, uh, uh, uh I wanted to fix my overlay. Let's go some Swift and Mac OS stuff. Yes. Hey, thank you for the follow pet food guy. We are working on this very overlay that you're seeing right now. This pet food overlay or pet food guy is now following overlay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, right now sound alerts are broke by the way. I don't know how to fix that. I think my capture card is just weird. Well, that definitely didn't work because it was unplugged. All right, no, it was, it was on the right thing now. But yeah, that's, that's what we're working on tonight. Um, right now, that's provided by Streamlabs. It's a website. Uh, it's just a web view, sorry. And, uh, we want to do some more native looking ones. Let's build some of this in Mono actual. Says it says a test to test the test. Test. Test the test the test. Uh, you asked your German friend if they play Scrabble in Germany. So I do know that. Um, uh, 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 named Blue Avengers is one of the new features of iOS 13. Offline finding. Interesting. So that's the thing that allows you to still be able to find your phone even when it's turned off. Nice. Um, asked if they play Scrabble in Germany. I have heard that like spelling bees are not a thing in other languages. Like only English has spelling bees. Everybody else is like, no, our language is just normal enough that everybody knows how to spell these words. Sorry, I'm looking for a cable so that I can plug in my phone so that I can describe the thing that I'm trying to do. So I will be right back as soon as I find a USB-C cable.
it was literally already plugged into my computer and I just couldn't find it. Okay. I have no idea what's happened. So yeah, in theory, you should be seeing my phone screen right now. Uh, that's another thing that I want to fix tonight is that used to work and I don't know why it doesn't work anymore. I don't know why it used to work. I don't know why it currently does not work. So anyway, we're going to kill the version of this. It's butterfly, but the people like to hit the double T hard. Nobody in Germany says it like the English speaking people do it. Schmetterling. I, I would assume that it's Schmetterling. Schmetterling? Okay, so we're gonna build and run. Yeah, the grayscale thing isn't working right now because I just killed the, the overlay. We're gonna build and run it from in here. And then you, once that's done, you can uh, trigger that again. Because we need to actually have the uh, the source available. Twitch alerts would like to access the camera. Hello there. And then it died because we don't have an access token. I don't know why that would fail. Oh, I know exactly why that would fail. Hold on one moment. Remember the other day when I accidentally uh, uh, leaked my tokens on stream because I opened a file that I shouldn't have opened on stream? I only updated them in one place, and I have not updated them in Xcode. This time it is actually running. We've got code. Tatu tata is the sound of the Kronken wagon. I don't actually know what German ambulances sound like. Okay, so we're occasionally getting our camera. Unexpected Apple bundle ID is being tagged as K camera type third party. Hmm. I don't know what's going on there. I am going to turn back on our color though, because because Mono tried to. And I want color. I like color. Color's great. Okay, so. Yeah, why is our camera working sometimes? That, that's that's my first question. If I recall correctly, we get like an error in here that seemed related. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. See, like it's working there. Thank you for the follow, Freak for Fun. Yeah, we got a couple different issues going on here. So we're, we're going to dig through all of these issues and see if we can figure out why. A, that's not working. B, 
Well, I guess then the other things are th these overlays. Which one should we work on first? Should we work on the camera that keeps popping up and disappearing again? Or should we work on the overlays? Because both of them are... Both of them are things that we could do tonight. I feel like the camera's going to be easier, so let's let's go dig into that. Especially given that it keeps kind of working. It like shows up and then disappears again, and I don't know why. Unexpected Apple bundle ID is being tagged as K camera type third party. I mean, let's start by just Googling that. Okay, well, that didn't work. That also did not work. Let's try just the bundle ID. It's not really helping because that first one is about MacBook or sorry, Final Cut Pro. This one might be a related. This is about OBS, so maybe it's like a. I don't really see anything. Oh, is it in this big list of stuff, though? Not not that. Yeah, it's this screen capture one right here, which is basically just saying that we do have this loaded. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go find where we actually are handling our, our code. So we have this discovered devices. We say device types external unknown. That one, like that, that almost seems like it's the kind of issue that they're talking about. Because that's what we are doing discovery wise. The device to video controller, device video view. We got two of these that say external unknown. So I'm wondering if that's maybe a problem. Does it have anything to do with identifier like multiple accounts? We've had issues in the past and had to reconnect. Re reconnect what? Like just try unplugging and plugging it back in? I mean, that'd be great. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Okay, so we solved that problem. I want to know why it doesn't work when we run it from the command line, though. It only works when we run it from Xcode. But, like, even if I do this and I kill that, and I go back and I run it from the command line. Come on. Just hit back. We do get this error here. Warning, AV capture device external is deprecated for continuity camera. Please use AV capture device type continuity camera. And add NS camera use continuity de camera device type to your info plist. So we do get that error only when we do this. And then, yeah, so it says capture device type external, which I'm assuming is this. Yeah. What is this log? This is just the same as the log that's in here. But in, in terminal instead. So we have continuity camera. I kind of wonder if we want to replace all of our external unknowns with that. And then it said uh, we need to add NS camera use continuity camera device type to our info playlist. So let's do that too. NS 
Menace camera use continuity camera device type. But what is that supposed to be? Is that just a boolean or? I mean, all of these say like errors that people are saying. I'm going to guess that this is a Boolean, but I like how nobody has like an answer. Oops, I don't want to do that. Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Uh, I just want to build. Yeah. Let's do a build and then let's run that from the terminal and see if we at least get our error. Okay, so that seems to have fixed the error. But yeah, we don't have a... We don't have our overlay. So my guess is it's related to... Yeah, this. The, the error, or the... Uh... The permissions pops back up. I actually kind of wonder, hold on. I have a theory. Sign to run locally. I wonder if I actually sign it because this was a problem that I was having recently with a different Mac app. Was it Black Highlighter? Maybe where it kept like saying like, oh, you, you this is a different app than the last time you ran it. If I say instead, here, let's actually just turn on automatic manage signings. Enable team me, me team. Sorry, uh, just kill it. Well, actually, yeah, we do want to run it in Xcode first. We want to run it in Xcode Agree to the permissions, then maybe try running it outside of Xcode. I also don't know why running it in Xcode is giving me a UI that the terminal is not. There really shouldn't actually be any difference between those two. Now I think I've hosed Xcode. Oh, there we go. Wow. And then maybe I need to just unplug it and plug it back in after we allow. Yeah, so that seems to have fixed it. And then, okay, so we've we've got that running. And we can't kill it now. <clears throat> okay, we killed it that way. We're just gonna quit Xcode because it does not know what's going on. But then let's let's try running it from terminal again. Still nothing. Yeah, I plugged it back in and that didn't fix it. Next code is just hung. Xcode doesn't know what's going on anymore. We're gonna we're gonna kill Xcode. Okay, so now that we've got that up and running, now if I just build and run again, do we see the Oh I, I screwed this up. Oh, hold on. Yeah, no, I I, I killed it. So we did not get the permissions dialogue again. 
Oh, jeez. There was a talented, oh, a talented an Enficker, I don't know, Enficker's programmer. I'm just using context clues at this point. Named Cocotype in Fahrenheit Land. Cocotype was known for his creation, the Vision Pro avatar. The most technologic jerk book. I don't know that one. If fired. All's technological Dirk Brook get fired, Verda. And this I'm I'm falling apart. I got I got through the first line. Dog in einer seltsamen Wendung fand sich Kokotype plötzlich. Oh, Dirk Brook is breakthrough. I could see that. Yeah, okay. Wendung von Zig. Kokotype plötzlich in seinen eigenen Avatar verwandelt. Befert in von diesem Fehler um Arte Kokotype seine neue virtual form und setzt seine Abenteuer Adventure. That's Adventure. Port. In dem er die reale Welt. Is that really? It's KI Mensch Hybrid. <laughs> Navigator. Oof. I, I, I was I, with you until this sentence, and then I, I kind of fell apart. All right, I, I I don't have it. My 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 German is uh not what I thought it was. Like I said, I haven't studied that in fifteen years. Revert von diesem Fehler um ar um armte. So, something Kokotype his newest virtual his new virtual form. Failure is like... I know I know that word. Let's see what Translate gives us. Type suddenly found himself transformed into his own avatar. Confused by this mistake. Oh, failure's mistake. I was going to say it was like loser. And I was like, I know it's like related to fail something. And while Escamine is mean, I, I didn't think he'd call me a loser. Combined uh, navigating the real world as a sort of AI human hybrid. Yeah, okay. It's like. Failure. I, I, yeah. All right. Um. Where where were we at? Okay, so we don't have. It's not popping up permissions, but it's also not working. In terminal. And then, when we do run it, it kind of blinks on and off. Although now it seems fine. I don't know what's going on there. Kind of want to see what happens if I try running this. Oh, hang on. What are we going to do? Let's let's throw some extra logging into our device video view. We've said that it's continuity camera, but I want to see, like, do we have like an error that happens when we try to get a connection? As so we do this, devices dot for each handle connection. Like, where would we see an error if we don't have permission?
AV capture device discovery session. AV capture device discovery session. We can just ask for devices. But I don't I don't know where we actually Check for permission. Hey, Jojo, how you doing? Maybe only when it's actually showing the image. So that would be in handle connection. Start running. Oh yeah, here's our try right here. Why can't you rename a variable with points? I'm sorry, I turned that off yesterday when I was playing uh, video games because there were no variables in Mass Effect. The issue you ran into was a certificate and third-party app connection when you use Xcode connected to your phone. Had to do with permissions and profiles. Something it disappeared. I'll, I'll, let me let me turn on JoJo's channel points reward. And the Crash Xcode reward. And all of the ban awards. Okay, this should all be on now. Hey, this guy, how are you doing? There we go. Crash Xcode does work. Uh, Third-party app connection when using Xcode connected to your phone and had to do with permissions and provisioning profiles or something. Yeah, so that's what I was wondering because that's why I tried um, that's why I tried signing it for real as opposed to just using the like sign to run locally. But that didn't that didn't fix it. You used Game Shark on this guy NZ's game. Yeah, everybody should go uh, check out this guy NZ, who's in the channel. He's working on a game that works great in in Steam Deck. Well, it did at one point. I still have not checked it again. I'm sorry. I I, I owe you checking that again. I need to get back to that. Um, so yeah, okay, so this is working when it's running in Xcode. It's not working when it's not running in Xcode. And then what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, fix that optional, or I wanted to log that op optional try here. So we're going to say this comes out of here. Else return do blah catch and we're just gonna blog our error is it just print that's all we care about hey adam wolf how are you done print is print all we're doing anywhere else? Print, yeah, print, print, print. Sweet. Okay. Print. Um. Brr, 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 brr. String describing error. Adam is also somebody that uh I need to do. Fixing the Twitch alert crash. No. We're just, uh, we're doing the, uh, channel points reward, ch uh, challenge redemption. We're, we're, we're improving everything. We're bringing back this little guy over in the corner. If we can figure out what the cause of the problem is. Um, and if we can't figure out what the cause of the problem is, then we're out of luck. But then we're also going to fix the follower and subscriber alerts. Oh, hey, here we go. This app is not authorized to use Jeff's iPhone 15 Pro. Well, why not? Code minus 11852. 
Yeah, let's actually just type in this whole thing. And then there's also what osstatus.com. We can type in just this number, but I, I think this is just going to give me the exact same information that we already have. This is a good site when all you have is an error code. AV error application is not authorized to use device. That might actually help me Google stuff though. The user denied permission. Denied is the word that I used right there. I don't know why, but. The user denied this app permission to capture media. But I have not denied anything. I don't know what you're telling me. Nope, that was not what I wanted. Didn't I have a different error somewhere here? Yeah, here we go. Add input issues with iOS 8. Don't deny that you denied? I don't think I denied. Yes, that is Kagi, the search engine. I keep forgetting because I've used uh, DuckDuckGo for so long and DuckDuckGo's results kind of suck that like every time I search for something, I'm like, hello, and then I tape bang G and it's just in my like muscle memory now. So I often forget to use Kagi because I end up hitting bang G and it goes to Google. And I just keep forgetting that. Uh, let's let's see if we denied it. Let's go to our permissions. Uh, where's privacy? Been using start page. I've not used start page. DuckDuckGo is driving you nuts. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. It's it's never been good. Back to the regularly scheduled jerk Xcode stream. Yes, exactly. This is jerk Coco type now instead of jerk Shepherd. Right, camera. Twitch alerts has permission. It's right there. It says Twitch Alerts has permission. And yet this is saying, no, it doesn't. That's a lie. I wonder if it has to do with like how I'm triggering this. Uh, let's see. Let's um, man open. Open command opens a file or a directory or URL just as if you had double clicked the files icon. So I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder if I need to fix this. And then this dash a, can I pass like a full application path to that? Yes, I can. Okay. So I kind of want to say open dash a this because what I'm doing right now and I can't open this file because this was what happened the last time that I uh, leaked all my secrets. Um, I'm opening the binary that's inside the application and I kind of wonder if I need to just open the application instead. And so I'm wondering if I do open dash a the path to the application. Is that going to work better than launching the binary. We'll keep the secret safe too. Eh, I don't know how much I trust that. But we're, we're going to try that. So you all won't be able to see that, but we'll find out. Oh, hang on. Uh... I'm actually doing something even weirder. Let me see if I can uh, just like scroll enough of the screen off. Beep. Okay, here we go. I've hidden the secrets through top top uh, uh, technology means of like just hitting blank lines until I do this. So yeah, I'm launching this from PowerShell. I'm not even like, well, yeah, I guess I am basically just saying start the file at this path. None of this is a secret. This is just Xcode's drive data path. I'm basically saying, yeah, inside of the app, do this. So A, I kind of wonder, can I get away with just doing this? I don't think that's going to work. But we'll find out. Let's let's at least start there. So let's, oh, uh, that was probably not all of what I wanted to do. Kill all search alerts. 
Is that even going to work? Okay, that's all I needed to do. Was just delete that that line at the end. Oh, oh yeah, you all did see that. Okay. That was the whole problem. I just needed to delete the bit at the end of that uh, command. That was it. That was the entire thing that I needed to do. Okay, well, uh, let me go back to secret mode and delete all those blank lines that I created. But that's an easy fix. And then let me fill that before I accidentally show it again. There we go. Okay. Well, that was easy to fix. All right. Um, I'm going to leave that logging in there because it's more useful than what we had before. But I don't think that actually changed anything. Okay. So let's go to fixing the other problems. Specifically, um, we're not fixing any problems anymore. We're adding new functionality, which is that we want to know when somebody follows and we want to display a new UI that we're not currently displaying. So that's what we're doing there. So do I have, yeah, where am I responding to actual events? Do you think you can fix every problem in one stream? Every problem with this project? Also, no. I was gonna say every problem with every project? Definitely not. Every problem with this project? Also probably not. But we'll try. So we have this thing called Redeemer. What What is calling in the, to Redeemer? You were promised that in the stream reward? What were you actually promised in the stream reward? As long as it still crashes Xcode, Mono's happy? That's good. All I said was improve. In theory, by fixing this, I've improved it. So I'm done. Good night. See y'all later. No, so we actually already have a redeemer on follow that seems to be doing something. Alert view controller show follow alert. Is this not actually working? I feel like this is not actually working. I need a way to trigger this. So that I can actually like test it as opposed to just having somebody follow and unfollow repeatedly. Uh, so let's go back into this app's Apple script support because that's a thing that this has. And let's Apple script this. Uh, where actually is that code? Here it is. We got all kinds of cool stuff in here. Open a document. Don't know why that exists. Open, close, save, blah, blah, blah. This is about printing. Why do we have all of this? It's just the standard suite. Okay. Device video. We give ourselves a code. Twitch alerts device video, I think, is what that was. You got to give yourselves these four-letter codes. Uh, Twitch alerts, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, let's add a new thing to this. This is definitely modern, important stuff that you need to support in a Mac app. Apple script. We're going to call this test stuff. For char code, yes. T-A-T-S. Test stuff. Man, maybe we should be editing this in Emacs because Emacs is a better XML editor. Uh, developer Twitch alerts. Actually, you know what? We had this open earlier. Yeah, there we go. Uh, what was that file called? Just Twitch alerts dot something. Wow, it sure would help if I could spell.
Yeah, dot sdef. Here we go. Okay. So what do we need in here? We need a class name. Yeah, I guess I guess we can just copy this. Hey, there's our class. Uh, it is going to have an element. Is it going to have an element? I don't think it'll have an element. Can we just give it an action? Response to command open. Coco method handle open script command. Okay, so we're going to say response to command. Come on. Response to command equals follow you know what we should do is we should just open the same file up on both sides so that I can have one over here that lets me copy from stuff and one over there that does not okay so response to command follow And then it has a coco method equals test follow alert. All right, and it does not have a type of devices. And I think that's all we need to do. Yeah, all right. Can I have a command that is multiple words? I don't think I can. It'd be cool if I could say test follow and test whatever, but I think it's just one word. Yeah, I, can, I can say make. Oh, here we go. I can do a command that has make and then I can have parameters. Maybe maybe we'll try that for later. Like we can have test and then we can test, follow, test, subscribe, test, whatever. But yeah, let's go. Let's do what we have first. Yeah, let's let's start here. It's even oh, hang on though. This also has just commands that are not related to the uh, application. Which seems interesting. What do we have in here? Here's our application. It does respond to stuff. Yeah, let's let's actually just start here. Let's save that. Let's uh kill the one that we have launched in. Oops, that definitely not what I want to do. Kill the one that we have launched over here. Build and run this one. And then once we have that, let's go open. Actually, you know what? We're, we're just gonna keep that unplugged. A, so they don't have to plug it in every time. But B, so that you're all not just staring at my home screen for no reason. Let's go open script editor. And yeah, so we got our library here and it does not currently include Twitch alerts. Let's do the open the editor product product Joe build folder. That's what we're looking for. So there's our app there. We can drag that in. Unable to add the item because it is not scriptable. But well, certainly was just a minute ago. Did we did we make an SDF that's not appropriate? I don't know how to like validate an SDF.
Oh. You have to coordinate the STF dictionary with your code. If you make a mistake in either one of them, some aspect of scriptability can fail mysteriously. That's not really... Enable scripting debugging in terminal with defaults right NS global domain NS scripting debug log level one. There's some more kind of want to think. I just want to Google this error. Apparently we've lost access to Safari just in general. See, I mean, this seems like it's got to be a problem with the fact that I've added this new suite and it doesn't like it. So let's just save that again. This should now be not changed. I kind of feel like we've done something to... Thank you, Eskamina. Okay, we're going to rebuild this. We're just going to build it. We're not going to run it. Because that shouldn't have done anything different. Let's drag this in. Okay, so it still doesn't like that. Interesting. We've done nothing to change this. Okay, I mean, it opens in, X in uh, Xcode. I just wanna know, like, how can I tell if it's valid or not? enough points to crash Xcode four times. Nice. Restart the script debugger after changing the SDF files. But wh which debugger did he say? Also, come on, where's the... Yeah, definitely ignore detected dark mode because that's clearly not working. Window SDEF validator. This guy's just providing copies of stuff. but uh I mean this is just validating it via XML lint that's not really helpful SDP. What is SDP?
SDP transform a scripting definition file or standard input into a variety of other formats for use with a scriptable application. All I need you to do is tell me whether it's valid or not. But I can turn it into a script suite file or a script terminology file. Don't know what either one of those things are. Scripting bridge obj-c header. Ooh. So yeah, let's try that. SDP dash F H dash F H. Thank you for the follow, Lena Swift. Dash F H dash O some kind of file. And then we give it the input file. Let's try that. SDP dash F H. Let's actually not give it an output. Let's just see what happens if we just give it an input. Uh, class Twitch Alerts application redeclared. Okay. Class Twitch Alerts application. Okay, so that's not actually a thing. But I'm guessing it's the Twitch Alerts and then just application. So maybe we do an extension of the other one. Maybe that's why it's man. So we have class and then it's saying. Well, hang on, though. What? Why? Um... Class name is application. Use class extension instead. Not a thing that exists. Extends the name of the class this element extends. Okay, so what happens if we delete this now? We save that. It still doesn't like it. Class Twitch Alerts application redeclared. Use class extension instead. Which we did. Is localized string key not codable or hashable? Why would it be? Twitch alerts application redeclared. Use class extension instead. I don't know what you want from me. So you need to use it. In you should not be using localized string key in your model. Well, no, hang on. That's not true. You should not be using localized string key as your model. You probably actually shouldn't be using it in your model either. I don't know what this wants from me. In your model on title or description. I mean, personally, I would consider that a view responsibility. So yes, but also like, why does your title or description need to be codable or hashable?
I haven't seen your code, so I don't I don't know. It might be something that I'm not understanding. I don't know why this is mad at me. What happens if I get rid of the entire standard suite? Because I feel like I don't care about 99% of that stuff. And I can always undo it. You have an array of a model that you use to preload achievements. You want to display those achievements as localized. Okay. So here, let me let me let me bang together a sample project because I'm not making any progress on this. So, uh, 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 so you've got a model which is achievement that has a title, description, and more that is of type string right now. I'm mostly okay with that. I still think that that should almost be a view perspective, but it, it's not wrong at that point. I don't think. Let's call this a uh, Alex app. I'm just gonna put it on my personal team right now. So let's say, okay, so you've got a model and if I recall correctly, your things are moods, right? And when you build the array, I have it let preload Title and description. So yeah, I would not. Mm, I would not do it like that. So let's go. Let's go look here. Okay, so model. Uh, so yeah, it was mood, right? Or no, you said achievement. So let's let's create a struct that's achievement. Okay, so you're saying title description. Okay. A, sure, you could probably do that. Preloaded onto CloudKit GRDB. So that's part of why I'm like, well, that's not part of why, because I didn't know that, but why would you have multiple different languages in CloudKit? But yeah, what I would kind of do is just like, I, I almost would have done this as like an enum. Uh, or maybe, maybe, maybe a struct, but like a struct with a, I'm, I'm trying to think of a different way. Cause yeah, this, this, if you did it as a struct, this would almost be like the whole like DTO versus domain object type thing, having like a view model. So your achievement, this is like your achievement DTO and you go like, uh, let identifier equals, uh, 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 did cool thing. If you don't localize it there, how do you localize it specifically on the view? If the model repopulates the database with English, that is. So I would I would have something like this. And so then, you know, you've got your uh, achievement. We can just call this our achievement local, for example. So this would be the part that would be codable and I guess hashable. But I also think that this could be hashable. Like there's nothing stopping this from being hashable. But what I would do here is I would say almost more, you, you would want like an achievement mapper. And it's like, uh, bar, no, uh, funk achievement from DTO, achievement DTO. Achievement. And then you could do faces in here. I mean, yeah, this is this does feel a little bit fragile, but it still feels less fragile than relying on English strings. <laughs> um I mean, I would still do something like this just because you're getting it from a server and you want something that's not going to be fragile in the sense of like, oh, you know, like if I don't have this exact value, it doesn't decode and then the app crashes. 
and also to support things like migrations from different data. So I, I would still have this split here. I'm trying to think of like what the best way to do this is. Because I don't know that you want to have just a big switch statement with a, a million potential identifiers. I mean, can you have your entire achievement driven by the server? Like, what are your achievements that are available driven by the server? But it's not, it's not doing that, right? You're setting all your achievements up locally. The problem is that localized string key cannot conform to hashable. So even if you have a mo model that is hashable, if it includes LSK, it won't work. So I, I was going to say like the the other, like I, I was imagining effectively the way that you would do that is, is this would actually be a var title. And then, then it would be a computed property. But really it sounds like what you should be doing here is just implementing hashable yourself. And then this would have like an identifier. And that would be all, all you would do is like hasher.hash, .hash, uh, hasher.combine, sorry, uh, identifier. So then your achievement, so this 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 could work. And, and then in that case, you, you really wouldn't even need the other thing. And then, yeah, so it'd be like dto.identifier. Localized string key value is uh, identifier, uh, dto dot identifier plus dot title, and then you could do the same thing here. Description, and then really you don't need to switch the dto identifier. You would just do this. No. So you do something like that. And then what you would do here is your content view. So, so let's say like, and then yeah, you said you also wanted this to be well, hashable and then codable. So yeah, I would not make this codable because that should be a separate thing here. But then like this is let identifier string optional. Uh, this would return a thing, and then this is like guard let identifier equals dto identifier else return nil. And then you, you, you delete that. And so then it would be, you, you would fetch your achievement DTOs somehow. Um, and then let's say, uh, we'll, we'll just do that here for now. Let achievement, let, let DTOs equals Sorry, an array of achievement DTO optional equals, and then we're, we're just gonna bake up some data. This would be something that you got off of the internet for some reason. Uh, here, here, let's let's actually, let's even fake it even more. At state var DTOs, achievement DTO optional equals empty array, uh, vstack, Alignment leading. I don't know. Why is that not working? Alignment leading. Do it this way. For each. Uh, this would be. Well, OK. I, I'm, I'm second guessing myself as I write it. Uh, achievements is actually just an array of achievement equals empty array. For each achievements, and you would probably want that to be identifiable now at that point, right?
something like that. And so then what I was saying is like dot task and then let your DTOs, this is an achievement DTO array. And this is like, here's where we're faking. Like we got this from the internet. And we got an achievement DTO. And we can even say like this one got an identifier of did cool thing. This one is an identifier of did uncool thing. And this one is an identifier, sorry, uh, 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 achievement DTO of, uh, and we got nil for some reason. We don't know. We don't know why we didn't get that value. It some the server did something weird and it returned a value. It's, it doesn't make any sense. So then we say let achievements equals achievement mapper dot. Uh, sorry, let mapper equals that. And then it's just self dot achievements equals mapper uh, da, 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 DTOs dot map compact map. Oh my God, why can't I write mapper dot achievement from so you can do that. Uh, why did that not work? Cannot convert value of type void. Shouldn't be type void. Oh, sorry. I, I these should be parens and not curly braces. What am I doing wrong? Cannot convert value of type to expected argument type throws achievement. What? Oh, sorry. This is not an, uh, an optional array. There we go. Got it. Okay. <laughs> now I'm here. <laughs> and then we don't actually need this. There you go. So yeah, this came from the internet. This may or may not be real, valid, actual data. We've got this mapper here to protect us from this invalid data. Uh, the other thing that this can do is it can like log, hey, I'm seeing a bunch of invalid data so that then if you are tracking it in like a Splunk or whatever, um, you, you can say, hey, there was, there was an error. We can catch like uh, an uptick in errors whenever we launch something new. It's like uh, print, nothing happened. Sorry, no identifier. So like, yeah, you could imagine that this is like logging to some error service that you have. But anyway, so we've got all of this, then we get our self achievements that should now display these. And so I've got that. And all we're going to see right now is did cool thing title, did cool thing description. But locally, we can go create our localizable strings catalog. And we can create a Where's English? Oh, we already have English. Sorry. English. And then we said did cool thing dot title. Did cool thing. And then can we just copy paste that we don't have? Nope, of course not. Did cool thing dot description. You did a cool thing. Did uncool thing dot title. Not cool, man. And then we go back to our content view. Ta da. We, we got we got to make these dot bold. So achievements would be considered a method because it is a function in the struct. Uh, no, achievements is just a property here. Think you're following? That's good. If you weren't following, then I feel like I would be doing a bad job of explaining things. Let's, let's make this alignment leading as well. No, so achievements here is a property. Um, 
the only funky thing about achievements here, so this is this is just a field that we've got on here. The only funky thing about it is this at state, which is a property wrapper. Um, it's basically a function, or it's it's actually a struct usually, and it could be any sort of object, I believe. Um, that basically says, hey, whenever I, whenever this value changes, whenever the value of this property changes. I want to be informed of it and can manipulate it in some way. Um, the state property wrapper is responsible for updating so a few I views whenever the, the value of that state changes. This is not publicly sourced, open source in any way, so um, we can't really tell what exactly it's doing. Thank, thank you, Escaminia. Uh, if you understand correctly, essentially the goal is to create an adapter which will act as a DTO. It takes in the model from the server and adapts it to be localizable. Correct. Adapts it to be whatever you want. This is basically the this kind of thing that you would use to make view models. And really that's kind of what's happening is that achievement is basically becoming a view model for your database model. So you can almost rename them that. So it's like achievement database model. And achievement view model. That might be a better way of wording these. And then you have this mapper that returns an achievement view model from our achievement database model. Same thing over here. What have I not done yet? Nope, one more. So yeah, I would not store anything localizable in anything that's touching the database because those two things don't really go together. Like your database should not know anything about how you're displaying the information. These these are separate concerns. And then that way you don't have to worry about storing stuff like title into your database. Like that's not important. All you need is some kind of way of identifying it. And then in here, this is where you actually matter. Now, where things could go wrong is what happens if I have an identifier in my database that is not in my localizable strings? I, I don't know how you would really handle that. So like if you have if you have this and it comes through all of a sudden, I don't know if you can use localizable string key to look up whether something exists it should be like, do we have so like localizable string key, localized string key. I keep calling it localizable string key. That's not a thing. This is the key used to look up an entry. But I kind of wonder, is there any way to actually look that up? I mean, the lame way would be to just use NS localized string. Uh, can you actually use key dot like raw value? Can you can you get the raw value back out of the localized string key? I mean, in this case, you don't need it because you haven't actually done that yet, but okay, that wasn't really what I wanted. This was what I wanted. Because you can initialize it with a value, but I want to know, can you get the value back out? And it looks like the answer is no.
Yeah, so I mean, like, in this case, you can also just do this. Because you've got just a string anyway. You just do that. And you're like, let value equals blah. And that'll give you a string. And then I guess it would be like guard value is not equal to else return. No. So in that case, it would be like you're checking whether or not this actually exists. And then that would remove it from the list. That's just an additional way of protecting against, oh, I got some thing that I don't actually know how to handle. So that would be one way of removing it. And then in that case, like you don't really need a localized string key at all. Because you could just, this is a string and this is a string. And then, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, this would just be title. I would almost do this. No, oh, sorry. No, this, this actually should not be the keys. I don't know why my button that normally switches tabs is just like jumping between two random places in the view. Now it's working kind of again. Yeah, so that would be another way of doing it. Then you don't really have look like string key at all, which may not actually be what you want. But it works. Got to separate them a little bit more. Otherwise, nobody knows what's going on. No, nobody knows that these are two separate views. Swipe up for more content. So yeah, that's how I would do it. I mean, obviously, it, I, I had to jump through it a couple different different times. Like, how actually would I do this? Let, let me work through workshop in my head. Like, how, how does this actually work? But yeah, no, I think this is what I would do. And now Holix has crashed Xcode. He's like, okay, I've, I've got all the answers. I'm done now. I mean, you knew what you were doing. All right, let's see if we can get back to uh, this script debugging. You wish you had all the answers. In out confuses you. It's a reference besides a value. In out confuses me. A reference besides a value. So in out just means. Yeah, I guess in-out would just be a... Uh... Does in-out only work for reference types? No, I guess it wouldn't. It would have to be a var, though, if it was a thing. Now, now, now I'm, like, second-guessing my own understanding of in-out. I can't remember the last time I've used in-out. Like, let me go look at one of my big projects and how many times have I used in-out? More than once. Uh, this is not my code, this is not my code, this is not my code, this is not my code. Once. I've used this exactly once. And, in fact, that was to do a thing. It's only value types. Really? That also seems weird.
in out is not a uh, part of the language you necessarily need to know the the corners are very big early as you can tell uh i would actually need a class here to know what i was doing class do it now Are you saying that that doesn't compile? Only value types, it passes the value type by reference. Oh, are, were you saying that only value types need to be a var? Because yes, that would be true. Oh, we can't call super.init, can we? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely learn it eventually. Yeah, so that cannot pass immutable value as in-out argument now as a let constant. But it's a reference. So this, sh I feel like this should work, but it doesn't. Because this is a class. I, I'm not surprised at all that this wouldn't work. For reference type, the in out lets you assign to that variable. That makes even less sense. I'm with pet food guy. In out confuses me. <laughs> so you're saying that if I have a class here, I could pass it now a different, completely different one as opposed to the reference. Like I could just say like, Here, let's call it let old now equals do it now. Let now equals old now. Here, we're actually going to do this in a project. Uh, sorry, a playground. Because now I'm confused. We are, we are like way off the beaten path, but hey, it's 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 fine. In out playground. Okay, so we're going to say punk mess with it. In out, sorry, it, in out, class, it. So it's an in out, it. This command is not confused. You got lost 20 minutes ago. Okay, so var, so let old it equals it. Let it equals old it. And then we're going to check old it triple equals it. So this is checking identity, not just are these two things similar, but are they the exact same object? So inside mess with it, we're going to create a new it. It. It equals new it. And then we're going to say, does old it still equal it? Except that we actually need to call this function mess with it. It is it. So for one thing, this should not compile right now because this is a let. And yet it seems fine. But nothing actually worked. So I'm, I'm kind of concerned that 
maybe the playground just isn't actually working. Oh yeah, here we go. Cannot pass any mutable value. It is a light constant. Okay, so. There we go. Yeah, so this is true. This is false. So it's allowing us to pass something completely new into there. Whereas I would imagine that if we did not have this as an in out it. Hey, we can't actually do this. This won't compile. Yeah, that would not. Well, OK. It is a let constant here, but can't I? No, I can't actually do that. That's that's not legal. Yeah, that's not legal. Uh, but if I did var it equals it, I think I could do that. But yeah, that doesn't actually affect the original one. And so this is still true. That's what's going on there. Yeah, I think this is one of those things that you learn mostly by playing with it and going, oh, OK, which is which is what I'm doing right now. But yeah, I yeah, you've seen the amount of times that I used in out in a fairly large project. It was exactly once. And even that was just because that was what the protocol said I should do because I was implementing some other protocol. And then, yeah, let's go look at highlighter. Have I ever used it in highlighter? In hasher, which is, again, part of a protocol here, preference key, part of the protocol. Asher. I had no idea what I was doing here. <laughs> this is uh, C programming interface stuff. So this is because I'm taking in a pointer to something. It had to be in out. Yeah, so a bunch of C compatibility stuff and then a couple things where the protocol said it had to be that. It's not something common in my experience, at least. All right, now for real, we're going to get back to this other project. Although, feel free to continue asking questions. I'm not trying to say like, now we're done. We're not asking any more questions. This is, no, we're just going to. Uh, we're just going back to here. All right. So why was this not working? We never did figure that out. Even when we set it back to what it was before, it seemed like it wasn't working. Hang on, I'm gonna do a full clean and rebuild. Adding args, where is the resource how to sub in an int string or bool in XC strings? Oh, that one's easy. You have to have a parameter in it and then you can swap out whatever you want. So if I do, yeah, you just you just do that. Let's go back to Holic's app. Uh, percent at. And then if I delete that, bloop. oh, percent at is the string. It's that. Uh, but then I think I can do uh, you did. Uh, cool. Yeah, you did a percent at thing. So then it would be that I actually don't know how you're going to handle this with code that we have um is you would have to use that as a format so it would be like title is string format and it's like voice string uh sweet just so that we know that it's different from what it was i was gonna type cool and then i was like we will have no way of telling that this is different but 
Oh, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? No, oh, I know why that didn't work. There. Yeah, dot title suite. That, that also still is not correct. Dot title. Oh, because we put it on the description. Derp. Eventually, I'm going to type all of the right things to make this work. There we go. You did a sweet thing and did uncool thing dot description sweet. Okay. Mostly this is weird because of the straight up bizarre formatting that I did. I shouldn't have done that. Listen, don't do that. But yes. That that is what you need to do. You just you just use the same format specifiers as anything else. Is that what you were asking? Have I actually answered your question? I don't know that I did. Here, we're we're gonna we're gonna come up with a better answer. Achievement count. Percent D. Uh, there are percent D lights. I was going to say achievements, but then I started going down that rabbit hole and I thought it was funnier. Uh, I actually don't know how to do this with localized string key. Is it... Nope. We're not doing the achievement. Uh, is it... This? Is it achievement count? I think it's this. Achievement count... Achievements dot count. I think that works. Nope. Hey, people have been asking me hard questions today. I feel like there's a way that that works. Did I just spell the word achievement wrong somewhere? These people are AI. AI is our friend. I mean, this is exactly what I want here. Why is that not exactly what we're doing?
If you're not sure what the key is, you can get the answer yourself by PO a localized string key in the debugger like this. Pass the I'm not a robot challenge to prove it. There was a website on uh, Hacker News just the other day that was doing exactly that, right? Now what have I done wrong? I know this can't conform. Oh wait, do I need the let? Yeah, there it is. Oh, dot percent LLD. Why is it percent LL? Oh, and then it went ahead and created it for me. Thank you. Helpful. So there's that. That's still not right. Why is this still not working? I am so confused. Is it because this is incorrect and invalid? There we go. Okay. So now, finally, you can take this and you can say vary by plural. And you can say there is that many like and so then if we get rid of one of our items. Swear to God. It did not actually build. There we go. It's like, what is going on here? There we go. Is one light or two lights? Ay, ay, ay. Our zero lights. Sweet. Okay. Any more questions? Let's go back to dealing with XML. Who led the dogs out? The Baja men led the dogs out. How to center a div? You don't. These are easy questions. All right, let's try this again. So we've we've cleaned and we've built. Let's go find our project. What is the capital in New Zealand? It's Wellington, right? I actually don't know that one. New Zealand doesn't exist. Perth? I'm pretty sure Perth is not the the Hey, see, I got it right. It was Wellington. Or at least I got the same answer that New Zealand, or that this guy got. I just called you New Zealand. You are the capital of New Zealand, this guy. Hobbiton. While Hobbiton is in New Zealand, I don't think it's the capital. Pretty sure uh, Rivendell is the capital. Where is our 
folder that has the answers to this. America is the capital of everything. Perth isn't real. This is true. This is what we're looking for. Products, debug, Twitch alerts. Still doesn't work. Unable to add the item because it is not scriptable. What does that mean? Why Fahrenheit is overrated? It's impossible to be overrated because it's the best, best possible option. And figure out how you can build a method to allow a user to style their own text on entry, meaning you want to be able to change font size, bold, italic, etc. Uh, don't you get that for free with uh, text view? All right, more. Uh... Well, not for each achievement. So we're just gonna comment out this whole thing. Uh, not text view, text editor. Oh, that only takes a binding to string. Yeah, no. Uh, I thought text editor allowed the user to do that, is what I'm saying. As of now, Swift UI text editor doesn't support attributed strings. To work around this, you might consider using a UI view representable to rep UI text view. Uh, so the answer is you can't do it with Swift UI. How to scroll H stack? Well, you don't scroll H stack. You scroll. Uh, 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 uh. You you put a scroll view with an H stack around it, like this. Watch. Well, this is a V stack, but. Oh, I, 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 sorry. It took me a minute. It, it took me a, a, a minute to understand the joke that you were making. I'm sorry. You don't scroll H stack. H stack scrolls you. I was going to answer your question honestly, and then I remembered that it's a joke. We do color dot random. It's not a thing by default. Scroll like this. No, you actually don't. You don't scroll it. As you say, it's just like, oh, wait. Ah, I see the problem is. Scroll it like this. There we go. And it has terrible performance for some reason. There we go. It's fixed. I assume you want a Mac app because that's that's the actual joke here, right? We gotta we gotta make the Holix app Mac app. Use the mouse scroll. I will. Just a minute. We gotta actually get the Mac version done. 
Ta-da! Just like that. Pokemon, no hands. I don't know. Sounds like a skill issue. One of these days we really will figure out why uh, this isn't working. He didn't have the scroll bar. Rich text kit. Nice. Is that in Swift UI? Only until he started scrolling. Oh yeah, I only had it once I started scrolling too. Not here. No scroll bar. And then I start scrolling and then it shows up. Okay. Back to here. One last time. One more time into the breach. Why are we not? Why is this not scriptable? Unable to add the item because it is not scriptable. What does that mean, though? Boilerplate to add Apple Script to your app in 2020. Oh, Christian Teets is a great guy. He's got some cool stuff. You need an SDF file with the script command definitions. You need to reference this file in your info plist, and you need to enable Apple script in your info plist as well. Bare minimum container boilerplate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, add the default commands. It's a standard quick command. Where's all the bit about info plist? You said that it needed to be an info plist, but what does that mean? Okay, here we go. Open your apps target and info plist and add enable Apple Script support. Set the key to NS Apple Script enabled. It will become scriptable and set the value to yes. In the next row, define which SDEF file exposes the available commands. Set the key to OSA scripting definition. It will become scripting definition file name. And the value to the file name of your SDEF. No need to specify a path. Okay. Let's go see if we have those. Info. Uh, we appear to have neither of those. Which does seem like it would be a problem. Aha. Why is this not pickle yet? I don't know why I put a quote there. That was not necessary. All right. Now let's try this. Did that work? It actually worked. Holy cow. We've made forward progress. This is what's in here. Application. Contains devices. Device. Contained by application. Visibility. Enum. Cool. Ay ay ay. Now. Whatever happened to that command that we cared about? First try. Exactly. Uh... I guess I want to delete this. And by delete this, I mean just get back to where we were. Okay, so we're going to save this. We're going to rebuild this. We're going to redrag this into here. He is here. Adam Wolf has been here. 
Can we remove this? Yeah, remove it and then re-add it. There we go. Okay, so we have our standard suite, we have our device video. Now, let's go back in and add our other nonsense that we cared about, definitely. I can't, I can't read right now. Scroll that up. There we go. Application. Uh, that should not be sweet name. I screwed that up. That should be... No, sweet. Sweet name is test support. Code is T A T S Tates description equals stuff. And then we have our class. I mean, I tested some of the tabbing stuff in Adam's app. I don't know what the quest, I don't know what your issue that you had with it was oh you had the yeah the bouncing keyboard i didn't have the keyboard showing so i can't answer that question but if i recall correctly that was just a limitation that existed because you had something that was like on different focus something right Okay, so this is our application, blah, blah, blah. And then what we needed was to bring up this SDF over here. And then we had a response to. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, I think we got something here. Let's go build and run that. We actually don't need to run it. We just need to build it. And then we close this. And then actually, can we just reopen this and it shows up? Yay! Okay, so we don't need to re-add it every time. We can just do this. Application. Twitch alerts. Follow. Response to follow. Application. It says response to follow, but we don't actually see follow in here. Let's see if we can write a script for this. Tell application Twitch alerts follow in tell. Okay, so it thinks that's going to work. The variable follow is not defined. I'm wondering if we had to define something somewhere. Okay, yeah. Command name. So we need to give it a command. Which is just out in the world. Nutter's still at work. You work from home. But you're in work mode. Why are you still in work mode? That was doubled up for some reason because we have two copies of the app running apparently. And that was very loud. We do have two versions of the app running. Oh, I definitely heard both. It was, it was 
doubled up. Okay, we've killed one of them. I don't know which one we killed, but we killed one of them. Uh, where were we? Um, actually, you know what? Let's just kill all of them. And restart. In stereo? It wasn't in stereo. It was just like a, a chorus of goat screams. Okay. We needed to find this command. Command name equals follow. I don't know what all we need to do. Code A-E-V-T-O-D-O-C. Why is it four things? Or sorry, two things. I don't know. We're gonna call this test ball. Also, why is it stuck? We just have Kane's comment for the rest of the night. What is going on here? Now nothing is running, so this is perfect. We're gonna run it back through here again. Good night, Nutter. Good luck with work. There's so much going on here. Okay, where were we? We were here. We had this working. We did not have this working. We needed to edit our command. Yes, okay. We've got our command. It's named follow. We gave it a description. As far as I know, we have nothing else that we need here. So I'm just gonna try this. Build. Yeah, you're behind. Compile. Reopen the dictionary. Test support. Follow. Hey, there we go. Okay. Build again. Now it turned dark blue. That seems like a good thing. Nothing happened, which is expected. We actually, that's that's actually exactly what we wanted. Okay. Let's go figure out where these commands are. So previously we had devices on NS application. So let's go look for something called devices. That looks like this. Delegate handles key, return key equals devices. Uh, does that need to be any different for Commands instead of keys. Scripting your app. No. Uh, let's just print scripting key key. Didn't see anything. Uh, let's go ahead and say uh, set devices to list of devices. Is that reasonable? Set my devices. I'm trying to remember 
enough uh, 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 thing. Can't get every device. Can't get every device. Set my device to first device. Can't get device one. Why not? Now, is that an error of I don't know how to write Apple script, or is that an error of my implementation? Because this definitely used to work. Actually, you know what? We can go look at Stream Deck because I have Stream Deck shortcuts in here. Or sorry, scripts. Tell application Twitch alerts. Set visit here. We're just gonna grab that. Actually, part of the problem might be the fact that we have no devices. Set visibility of first device to pip. Can't set device one to pip. Okay. Let's try plugging in a device, why don't we? Siri suggests that I go watch another five stream. I suggest you go watch another five stream, but I don't think he's streaming right now because he's at work. Okay, so this still does not work. Curious. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. So we're, we're, this is not getting called for some reason. All of this clearly is getting called. This exists. So it should work. This is interesting that it says Coco Key as devices. We also had the problem where we had the class extension stuff. Here, we're going to go back to Emacs. Oops. I kind of want to see what the error is if we just don't have valid syntax. Yeah, okay. Hmm. I'm not sure what we're doing wrong here.
Oh, that's probably a terrible idea. Let's not set a breakpoint on response to selector for app delegate. <laughs> okay. Uh, should automatically localize key equivalents. Okay, we got a million things called optional. Uh, yeah, we we got a we got a couple uh, of these. Why don't we go ahead and uh, and then that way we can just type selector in here there we go okay so it asked for a million different things uh did it ask for delegate handles key no and it still has not asked for anything so this is really not seeming to do much Kind of worried, like, they getting a different thing of Twitch alerts. I don't think that'll run, will it? It didn't not run. Okay, so this did respond to selector app should terminate, and it did actually terminate it. So it is talking to the thing somehow. And yet. What am I missing? Application device. Hold on. Application contains devices. But then it just says device. And this is still not actually asking about anything. I'm confused. Because then this is our devices right here. And this, I'm assuming, is never called. If it is, then hey, maybe we have a different problem. But it's not. So I was going to say, maybe in there, like maybe this is returning something in this app windows, compact map, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't seem like it's doing that. Ugh, what am I missing? Let's go back to that one article.
Well, this was less helpful than I thought. You don't like the autogen stuff in XC strings? What don't you like about it? You can, you can turn it off. Uh, uh, let's go back to Holix app. I mean, do you have a localized string key that has an empty string? I thought there was a way to turn it off. I know you can turn it off on a key by key basis, but obviously that's not going to help you. For previews. I thought there was a way to turn it off. Uh, it does not auto prune remove strings. So like here, this one here is, is automatically managed. You can look at it here. Um, oh, that's why it didn't work. Cause I was clicking on that. Okay. But this one here is automatically managed. If I go and I delete that because I've, I've already got a string in here. If I go and delete that, or just comment it out at least and hit build, it'll actually mark it as stale over here. And then you can go through and remove them automatically. I think you might be able to. Oh, that's not it. Oh, geez. I think there might be a way to. Oh, yeah, you can sort it by state. Can you go through and make extraction state manual for all ears? I mean, then, then do it. But I don't think that'll stop it from adding new ones. It's over here. Did I? Ah, oh, there we go. No, that's still the same string. We're just trialing XC strings tool. Yep. But that that's how you do that part. Uh, Adam. I already forgotten who asked that question. This is what happens when I stream longer than two hours. I forget how things work. Okay, um, I have no idea what's going wrong here. And I'm running out of theories. I don't know why I type Mac app, like, Is Apple script is broken a valid theory. I, I'm beginning to wonder, but I mean, this person says download script debugger. Oh, this is not script debugger. This thing was also still downloading from hours ago. Use compiler to extract Swift strings. Oh, is that a uh, build setting? Xcode 4 dropped the script debugger. Okay, so there used to be something built into Xcode. Oh, wait, no, this is something completely different. Script Debugger 4 and 5 have been superseded by Script Debugger 7. But it looks like there's actually a Script Debugger 8. Does this actually run? Where is the download button? Download.
Ooh, that's some that's some JPEG there. All right, uh, yeah, so it is getting the right path. This is how you know it's an Apple script tool is it's got the path in colons as a file path separator. But it, that is the right version. Just says offending object. Can't get every device. Negative 1728. Let's go back to osstatus.com that we were looking at earlier. Type in 1728 into there. Apple events, no such object. I mean... Yeah, but how am I supposed to get that object? Okay, hang on. I have a theory. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, I don't have a theory anymore. What I'm trying to remember is, can we replace NS application? Sure. No, change principal class to my application and change the application scene and main storyboard to NS principal class. I'm mostly just kind of wondering. Yeah, so principal class is NS application. Let's call this Twitch alerts application. Let's go subclass that. Also, I just read that thing saying that that's not going to work, and I... I did not follow the very rules of the thing that... ...worked. Doesn't work in a Swift package? I don't- I don't understand what you- what doesn't work in a Swift package. Because you said something about it not working in a Swift package earlier, and I, I wasn't sure what that meant. But I ignored it because I didn't know what it meant. Does this even run? This, this is the first step. 
It seems like the answer is yes. Uh, second question. I don't know what this means. Uh, third question. Swift Gen didn't do string catalogs yet? I mean, Swift Gen probably doesn't do string catalogs yet, but I don't understand what that has to do with anything. I'm still confused. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming this works. And this application does it, does it use init? I'm assuming because that's that's where that came from. So we do have hello world. Okay. What I'm wondering now is at obc. Uh, var devices. You know what? We're just going to return an array of nothing. We're still going to set a breakpoint just to see if it works. Okay, so we're here. We're gonna go back to script debugger. We're gonna try running it again. Still not happy. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. I'm running out of theories. Does it work if devices was an array of a fundamental type? I feel like it would not, but we can try. It's worth trying. Nada. Well, I mean that one, but I mean we can try the one in FL get too. The fact that we're not hitting this is the thing that I'm most skeptical about. Honestly. K 
Can't you print print which one is? I mean, none of them are. That's the that's the problem. Oh, the error says can't get every device. Can't you print which one is? I can't get any devices. Yeah, so you can't get device one. Could it be a permissions issue? I don't think so, because I think if it were a permissions issue, then it would just say, like, I can't ask anything. Well, especially because when I was able to tell it to quit and that worked. That to me means that, no, it's not a permissions issue because I am able to control this. I just can't get the data that I'm providing. I do have another thought, though. Hold on. Uh, that didn't fail. It didn't do anything, but it didn't fail. Oh, wait, hang on. It hung, which means it came over to here. Oh, my God. And yes, we did respond to selector optional application delegate handles key. Scripting key devices. Ye gods. OK, I do think, though, that if I comment that out, it should go to the one that's now in application. I don't know why it wasn't working with NS application. That seems like it should have been just fine, but. Yeah, now it's hitting this one. OK. We're getting somewhere, finally. <sighs> Does any of this work? Also, we can stop our breakpoints. OK, this does not work, uh, mostly because this should be devices now. Oh, what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. I'm going to need to leave soon, but let's let's at least get a single test follow done. And then this is going to have to be a two stream challenge. Well, let's let's at least get something working. OK, index is out of range. That's because we don't have any devices currently. Because this thing's not plugged in. Try again. Index is still out of range. Don't know why. Uh, we're probably returning this. I did say extended stream challenge. Because I need to go to the grocery store. OK, my guess is, well, I've got a lot of guesses. NS app. Why would I say NS app windows? That's I don't need NS app. I mean, this is true, but I mean, we could also just call it Windows. So we do have an alert window. So that part should work. Does that window have an alert view controller? It does. So we should return devices from that. Z 
zero elements. Why is this zero elements? I mean, for one thing, hang on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Stop. Why is this not connecting? Oh, it is. Okay, hold up. I don't like it for some reason. I feel like this should be not zero. I don't know. Anyway, I got to head out. I'm sorry. We will come back to this again on Friday. Uh, actually, possibly Wednesday this week. Yeah, let's say Wednesday. No, let's say maybe Wednesday. Let's say you should follow me and uh, you can find out that way. Probably Wednesday, uh, maybe Friday. We'll find out. It depends on what happened. Let's say this sometime this month. Yeah, we can we can agree to that sometime this month. I was going to say, is Friday after this month? No, Saturday is April 1st. I got to get my April 1st stream ready because that's on Saturday and I am not ready. So I'm also going to figure that out. Because y'all love that one. And so that'll be that'll be what happens. Yes, I live so far from the grocery that's going to take me five days to come back. That is true. This wasn't the April 1st stream? No. We 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 get wild on the April 1st stream. So yeah. Uh yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a great evening. And uh I hope to see you soon. Good night.